The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System. And now your host, Bruce Howard. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Frank Haith Show. I'm Bruce Howard, joined by the head basketball coach at the University of Tulsa, Frank Haith. And a one in one week for you. You hold serve at home, you lost on the road, and the battle goes on in the American, but you're tied for first right now. Yeah, it was, it, all in all, it was a really good week. You know, we knew that it was going to be a challenge going to Houston to win that ball game. Um, I thought our guys competed hard, uh, started that ball game for the first half. Uh, then it, there were some plays, bang, bang plays got away from us, but we had a great win against the SMU team that was battling with us for a first round bye and on Saturday. Absolutely terrific bounce back win for the hurricane on Saturday and then another busy week coming up. We'll get to all of it in a moment on the Frank Haith Show. We're back on the Frank Haith Show and coach, you get ready for kind of a showdown game at Houston in a, in a contest that, hey, if you win, you tie them for first place, and then you've won both games. Boy, it's a huge opportunity for your team on the road. Huge right? opportunity. You know, and a game like that can propel you from a uh, standpoint of winning on the road against a quality opponent and get a postseason bid. And uh, so it was a lot at stake. I thought our guys were ready for it. You know, Houston was coming off a tough loss um, uh, against SMU, so we knew we were going to get their very best effort. And uh, it was going to be a challenge for us. But I thought our guys' mindset was really good going into the game. Yeah, that Houston team, uh, not a good team to approach after a loss. They're 15-0 and the last three years after a loss. And it was the Fertitta Center in Houston, Texas, the Golden Hurricane against Houston. You guys started off pretty well. We did. We, we, we knew we had we, we, you know, played inside out. Uh, you know, they were going to double off a loss. And uh, right there, got great pace. Eli's gotten so much better uh, attacking the basket. Uh, you know, and you know, right there, there's there we are on the glass. You know, Jirai with a stick back. You can see it's a low scoring game, uh, but we're making plays right now. We're right there where we need to be. Yeah, and the Hurricane at that point, uh, down by three, and again, down by three. Good defense here, and Martin Zigmano leads the break for you. Huh? Good pass out, good attack by Elijah, great finish, and an and one. And so the Golden Hurricane with nine minutes to go in the first half, playing some of their best ball in this game. In fact, you would hold the lead several times down the stretch in the first half. Yeah, and I thought, you know, we're sharing the ball right there. We, we had a good focus and a game plan to attack these guys. You can see defensively, they got 17 points with three minutes to go in the half. And so we knew that was gonna be important for us to be able to defend these guys. Uh, you know, we they put a smaller guy on dry and he attacked him in the post right there. Gives us a lead with three minutes to go in the half. 20 to 19. So you're up 20 to 19 approaching the end of the first half and they end up with a little bit of a run at the end of the first half and they take the lead on a 7-0 run to end the first half but you're still right in there trailing 26-20. Yeah we gave up our first second shot points and our first transition bucket points right there at the end of the last three minutes of the half and you know for the most part we did a good job of defending those guys. Now you can see we didn't make shots. We, we didn't shoot right. the, we shot the ball poorly from three and from the floor but our defense kept us in yeah, you're hanging in on the rebounding side. You're not shooting well, but uh, heck, you're only down by six. You'll take that going into the second half, right? Absolutely. We just had to keep defending. And then um, this kid right here got loose. He got going, you know, uh, made some shots against us in the corners, really attacked her, attacked us in the corners. But, uh, you, know, you know, Martin was a focus of theirs, and he still ended up with 15. It was, you know, still playing at a high, high level. And the Golden Hurricane able to continue to bounce back and at this point down by eight and now down by only six. Yeah, nice pass by Darren. You know, we're still battling right here. You know, they're making plays and uh, we're still going at them. There's Martin through the double team. Uh, you know, we're down six. And uh, again, this is where Mills got going in the corner and got some separation. They hit a lot of shots at the end of the shot clock. And then some stuff happened. Obviously, yeah. uh, there were some some calls you didn't like, and uh, you were ejected, and uh, Eli Joyner was ejected, and they get a whole bunch of free throws. Turned a game that you still had a shot at all of a sudden into a hard one to win. Yeah, and, and all I can say is that, that wasn't deserving. Uh, we were down 12 at that point in time, and it's a high-level game. Uh, you know, I've communicated a lot worse than what we communicated <laughs> in that game. So, a uh, little disappointing that that was the what happened. Um, uh, but, um, you know, obviously our guys 
you know, without Elijah there and it made it tough for us. Well, the Golden Hurricane battling down the stretch and the, the rest of your coaching staff doing all of the coaching, but here's a, a nice play by Isaiah Hill. Good to see him. He got a lot of minutes, obviously, with Eli out of the game. Yes, and, uh, you know, we still, you know, you can see here, you know, hustling and trying to make some plays, but obviously uh, made it very difficult for us uh, down the stretch. Well, and uh, for the Hurricane, Houston obviously has this ball game in hand. What what are you looking for your team to do at this point in a game such as this? Well, just keep, keep, uh, you know, hopefully just continue to compete and, uh, you know, and play your butts off and, and understand we were going to, you know, the last 12 minutes, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it right. when we got back with the team. It was focusing on, you know, those first 30, uh, 32 minutes and then, you um, and then get back to working on getting ready for SMU. Josh Early with a nice basket at the end of those highlights, and Houston ends up winning the game, and now you're in a situation where you come back home, Coach, and very important game, obviously, and uh, all sorts of different things going on uh, at the Reynolds Center, but just an important game to beat SMU. Important game. You know, we only had two days to prepare, but we really did a great job of mental preparation getting ready for the game. In a moment, we'll be back with Tulsa SMU on the Frank Luke Show. We welcome you back to the Frank Hayes Show, the University of Tulsa, the big home game on Saturday, taking on SMU and Coach, no question about it. You know, you, you just got to put the Houston game behind you at this point and get ready for a big-time game against the Ponies. Yeah, there's just, you can't dwell on that, the SM, I mean, the Houston game. I, I think we knew the importance of this game on Saturday, so we had a lot of conversation with our guys. There wasn't a lot of opportunity to do a lot of banging on the court because it was such a quick turnaround. But we had to do a lot of mental preparation, getting our guys ready to compete against the SMU team is very, very talented. I mean, the most gifted offensive team in our league. Yeah, absolutely. Leading the league in scoring and in shooting and in free throw shooting in a lot of different categories. So a big defensive game for TU and the Hurricane just one game ahead of SMU in the standings. Nine and four SMU coming in at eight and five. And this is the only game between these two coaches. So it was really important. Really important. You know, you win the tie record. And by the way, we were, we're, I think we're three and one against those single games, which is a huge deal. Uh, there you see us early in the ball game, sharing that ball, playing inside out. Lawson, who's playing really well right now, knocks down a three in the corner. Lawson Carita with that basket for the Hurricane. And, and uh, boy, when Darian Jackson can make that shot, that really helps, doesn't well, it? And those are the two guys people of late have chosen to play off of. Darian and, and Lawson, those guys have stepped up. And there's Elijah showing great explosiveness attacking the basket. And so Tulsa throws the first punch in this game. Brandon Rochelle, nice off foot, little left hand flip, huh? Yeah, nice, nice attack and finish there by Brandon. He's still trying to get his feet back underneath him. Good penetration and great pass by Isaiah. Hill, great huh? pass, great pass. And, uh, you know, Zay's getting so much better in terms of just feel and uh, just a super pass by to Martin's. And Martin's a great finish. And what you uh, probably but the average fan might not understand is, and there's a great pass inside as well to Martin Zigbano, but that dribble penetration penetration to the paint really uh, stresses the defense. Doesn't it? it does. It, it, it calls rotations. It calls help. And uh, there's Martin's on the glass, but it, then people have to rotate, and now you, uh, you draw your dish. You draw your kick. And Martin Zigbano basically taking the game over at this point. Boy, was he a man. Yeah, just two feet in the paint. You know, that those high-low passes, you see a lot for us because we, we, we take away the, the, the double team opportunity from the up top. And uh, there's Martin again, Martin's aggressiveness, finishing uh, with contact. And the yeah, that's the, the other thing is he's playing so well against that contact now, isn't he? Yeah, he's getting hit a lot. He's getting a whole, hit a whole lot because I think teams are trying to be physical with him. But uh, a nice play by Elijah playing off that ball screen by Martin's in transition and finishing. Late here in the first half, a scramble ball, but Dry Horn able to come up with it. And it results again in a basket by you know who, Martin Zigbano. He's scoring a lot of different ways. Yeah, that's a nice pivot. You know, people like to think he only goes over his left shoulder, but brings it back. And here's a, another great rebound, stick back by Martin, just uh, right place, right time. He would end up with nine rebounds in the ball game, which would be one shy of his career high. But there you look at the numbers. Pretty darn good, and again, you're, you're, you're closing down against SMU. They shot only 35% in that first half. Yeah, and, you know, we knew they would, uh, they're a great three-point shooting team, and uh, that 33% three-point number, you know, would go down too, and we, once we got to the shooters, Isaiah Mike got loose early in a couple threes, and uh, beginning of the second half with this first four minutes was really critical. 
Corner jump shot by Elijah Joyner. Nice ball reversal, sharing the ball. Uh, we're moving that ball really crispy there, and that's great post up by Martins and a terrific pass leading him to the bucket. Martins would end up with 23 in this ball game. And here's uh, Lawson Carita again, and again he splashes it. Again, there's they're doubling off Lawson. Teams have chosen to double off Lawson and, and Darian. And uh, a great shot by Lawson here. You know, they're sagging off again of Darren. So those are the two guys people have chosen to do that. So they're going to get open looks, and uh, there's Darren knocking one down. And the Hurricane at that point up by 11, or I'm sorry, up by 9, and that's a, a little 4-0 run for SMU to cut it down to 5. Good execution there on one of our set plays, and nice pass by Darren, good finish by Lawson. Every time SMU made a little bit of a run, you were able to respond, and this time it was Jariah Horn. How important was that shot? Big shot, deep three with confidence and, uh, you know, Jirai is obviously uh, one of our best three-point shooters. Well, I tell you what, that was one of the best post moves that I saw all year long, the way he pivoted two or three times and kept that pivot foot down. How do you do that? That's incredible. Wow, just a uh, just big strength and uh, probably a lot of contact there too. And uh, but a good finish. And ended up finishing the play out, Tulsa up by double digits, still up by double digits as that shot splashes through as well for Lawson Korea. Yeah, nice patience there with, with Isaiah not turning that ball over with a lot of pressure. Kid Kendrick Davis put a lot of pressure on him. And this is a heck of a play by Darren, stealing that ball in our, our zone press and then going to finish through contact for an N1. So he would get that extra point, if you will, after that steal. Really terrific play of attacking, drawing the contact and, and getting the bucket. The free throw went in as well, and now you're up 63-48. And now you're up 65-48, and now it's time to kind of put this game away if you can. Yeah, that's a great, great hands by Jirai stealing that ball, but then a terrific pass uh, to Darren for the finish. At one point, it got up to 23, the lead for the Golden Hurricane, and that was on that play. And it's Eli playing big boy basketball, just uh, point guard, you know, posting up, dribbling to a post up. Great pass by Isaiah right there, and good catch by Manny. To finish. Good to see Emmanuel Ugbo make a shot, and then at the end, right at the end, you're able to get one final shot. And always good to see Isaiah Hill, your young freshman, knock in a three, huh? Yeah, they just uh, I think he's a really good shooter, and he's you know, hadn't shot the ball from a number standpoint great this year, but uh, we believe that he can shoot the ball. But there's those numbers: 27% now from three, 30, we held him under 40% from from the floor, and they're they're uh, one of the best offensive teams in the country. But look at our numbers; pretty good, yeah. you know. 49% from the floor and 35% from three. And obviously you look at Mars, but then Lawson and Darren's numbers are really good, important, uh, them get scoring for us. So a huge victory for the Golden Hurricane, and they go to 10-4 and four in the league with Houston losing, and Cincinnati won on Sunday. It means that three teams now with four losses atop the table in the American Athletic Conference. We'll be back with more in a moment. Big time win. 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 Yeah. Uh, big time win, big time win. Yeah. Proud of you. I mean, we we executed on both ends of the floor. We executed on defense. We executed on offense. Great job. Really proud of you. Okay. Now here's here's the key. Uh, we it's a quick turnaround. We play Tuesday. So tonight is extremely important. We get our rest. Okay. Tuesday's coming quick, and you playing a team that's won two in a row. And they just beat Central Florida at Central Florida, and they just beat. These guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we understand we're playing a very good two, a two lane team that's going to be in here really confident, okay? But I'm proud of you. We did a lot of great things out there today. Let's get better tomorrow. Yeah. seconds left into the right hand corner to Hurd. Fires a three, hits it with .5 seconds left. TU has tied the game.
three-pointer. Short off the rim with three seconds left. Harrington gets the ball, and the buzzer goes off, and Tulsa joins the ranks of the elite. And the Golden Hurricane on Sunday will play for a trip to the Final Four. Fans at this time, joining us today from the 2000s Elite Eight team are Tony Hurd, Dante Swanson, and Eric Coley. Well, there you have it. It was all part of Legends Day and the celebration of the 2000 team that reached the Elite A. Really a special team, Coach. It was, you know, watching those clips there. And um, I remember watching that team. And uh, they were fun to watch. They played so hard. They shared the ball. Um, I mean, it was just a fun time. And I got a chance to spend some time with those guys afterwards. Absolutely. And also part of the special nature of Saturday's game was the hanging of the rafter of number 32. That's right. The jersey retirements of one Bobby Bingo Smith, a terrific player for the Golden Hurricane in the mid to late 60s. Bobby Bingo Smith was a four-sport letter winner in his high school in Memphis. And although a great football player, elected to play basketball at the University of Tulsa. Bingo Smith, in my opinion, uh, other than Glenn Dobbs, was probably the greatest athlete ever to play at any sport at the University of Tulsa. On the freshman team, Bingo averaged 17.3 points a game and an astonishing 14.5 rebounds a game. Then on varsity as a sophomore, scored 15 points a game and led the team in rebounding with 10.4. An injury diminished his numbers as a junior, but he still averaged over 13 points a game. Then as a senior, he exploded with a 24.5 average to lead the Missouri Valley Conference to go along with 10.3 rebounds per game. Bobby Smith was probably the if not the best player that ever played here, he had to be one of the best. I, I think he probably was the best I've ever seen here. I'm often asked, who's the best player you ever coached? And I can't tell you because you all did different, different things. But I don't hesitate to tell them the best athlete I ever saw was Bobby Bingo Smith. You know, he, he could play anything, all sports. Bingo was Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year in 1969, along with being an All-American. Bobby was inducted into the TU Athletic Hall of Fame in 1984. Tell me another TU player that had those kind of stats. How many players were two-time All-Missouri Valley Conference first team? First-round draft pick. Uh, played 12 years in the NBA. Uh, I don't think you, TU has that many athletes who has, has those kind of credentials. He, he was a great one. And now bingo Bobby Smith's jersey hangs from the rafters at the Reynolds Center. More on the Frank Haith Show in a moment. We're back on the Frank Haith Show. And coach, as you look at the standings, uh, there you are. You have four losses tied for first in the loss column. And with Cincinnati and Houston, they both have the midweek bye. Your game on Tuesday, if you win, all of a sudden, it's a three-way tie for first. That's huge. Yeah, it's a big week. You know, it starts with Tulane team that's won two in a row. And, yeah. and, and beating SMU, going on the road to win at Central Florida, uh, we, we know they're very capable. They're, they're athletic. They can shoot it. Um, and it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us on Tuesday night. Earlier in the year, you defeated Tulane in New Orleans, but uh, you know that was then, and this is now, and so you you can't go back on that one and say you, this is an easy one. No way. Huh? No, no. We, we, it was tied at the half, and yeah. it was kind of you know we had got some separation there late in the in the, in the second half, but uh, they're they're a very talented, and gifted team, and we saw us going to UConn and winning, and UConn coming here. So it, obviously, we understand you know, the challenges of playing a team a second time. So then we will see you at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night for TU taking on Tulane. And don't forget Senior Day coming up at 5 o'clock on Saturday when Tulsa entertains UCF. For the coach, I'm Bruce Howard. We'll talk to you next week on The Frank Haith Show. The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System. The Frank Haith Show has been a presentation of Golden Hurricane Sports Properties and a Kane Vision production.